Okay, 22 years ago I did this little wagon. Well, I had a new customer who asked, who's a doctor, who asked if I could do, do one for him. And I said, yeah, okay, I'll do that. There's some other scenes for it. There's that same scene for it. One thing I did learn is, uh, now this is one I did even earlier than this one here. Getting back to one thing I learned this time. There's a close-up, nice looking. Got his hat there. He's got a little grease bucket down here for the wagon. And back in the back here is a sack of oats and a feed bag for the horse. He's got his whip here. The thing I learned this time is when you're doing projects like this <laughs> you think you might do another one in 22 years take make sure you take enough photos so you have a reference to go by because on this one here because I didn't take enough photos I don't have a reference on how I constructed that framework underneath it I don't have the reference really there's a little bit of it peeking out, but not completely. I don't have a reference on how I made these springs. Just so many things that I could have really used now. Anyway, set those aside. Now here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to make a wagon that looks similar to this. It's not going to look exactly like this, because I'm not going to spend that much time on constructing an, an exact duplicate. I'm going to construct one that looks uh, pretty close to it, and that looks pretty close to it. Nothing wrong with this one here. So that's what we're going to do. Now to do that, because I didn't take pictures or reference material, reference material, I had to go out and dig up all this old stuff and try to piece things back together again, which will let me constructed. One thing I think that's going to help is I do have plans for a Surrey here. This is for four people. But basically it's the same same thing as uh, the doctor's buggy except it's for more people. It's just going to be compressed a little. Luckily for that, it shows me the undercarriage, what goes on down there. That's important. It shows this area right in here is important. Although this wagon's never going to roll, the front wheels are never going to turn, I still want to make sure that I get as much in there as I can. It looks like they could do that. These plans, you can buy them at the... Uh, Hanson's Wagon Shop, let me see this back to where I was before. Hanson's Wagons, if you hang on just a moment, I'll go get the catalog. Judy, keep going. Up in, I think you're up in Minnesota. Hanson's Wheel and Wagon Shop. Just look up, look them up on the web. There it is right there. Hanson'sWheel.com. HansonWagonsWheels.com. Quick minute. Oh. Okay. And I believe they, although it's been a while, I believe they sell plans to all different kinds of wagons. And one more book in this book here. You want to get a terrific reference book? Look for this. This is a fantastic book. This guy, these are all models. And this guy was really, really something when he built models. But they're all 
all in here and in the back of the book they have some of the plans but uh, these are these are the plans that you can find an order from that handsome wheel company I think this set of uh, Surrey plans cost me about 20 bucks I've got plans over there for a buckboard I think it cost maybe cost a little bit later level lesser can't remember right now but uh, they have all kinds of plans I, I bought chuck wagon plans from them Surrey plans buckboard plans confederate cannon plans mud wagon plans stagecoach plans you name it I bought all kinds of plans from them. and this guy here is another catalog this is 98.99 it's back there doesn't look like he has a website but uh, if you can search for this one here Woodland Coach if he's still in business this is a terrific book where people could buy parts for buggies but uh, it's good for me it might be good for you too if you can find it it shows you how different parts of the wagon look individually not all put together See, there's the carriage gear right there. I was going to use this until I came across. I can't find. I can't see it. I'm not going to dig it out right now. But anyway, there's the carriage gear all broken down. Okay. So today, I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our wheels. Now, here's a wheel. This is a wagon wheel. It's not a buggy wheel. Uh, this is what we're going to make. We're going to make the wheel rims, and then we're going to add the spokes, the hub, and last but not least, we're going to put a steel rim on the outside of it. Okay? And today I'm going to show you how to make the, the rims. Here's the back rims for the buggy. Look at that there. Don't need that. I kind of drew out a full-scale drawing here, including the horse, just so you can see where we're going here. Okay. This there, this rough drawing here is the front part and back part of the wagon where the springs spring set. Okay. So anyway, what now we're going to do is we're going to cut these rims. All right, to do that, I built this jig. This is my circle cutter. And all it is is uh, something that can slide back and forth. It's got a little nail on it here to hold your piece of wood. I built it for my bandsaw. It's going to slide right into my bandsaw, as you'll see here in a minute. So what I want to do is I want to first determine the radius of the wheel I'm going to cut. And that's it right there. So I want to find the center of my blade. And I'm going to roll this thing in there. Right to there. And lock that down like that. I've got me a piece of plywood here. Now let's pay attention to this plywood, not that piece, this piece. You can get this down low, as I just bought me a big sheet of it. It has a wide ply in the middle, if you can see that. And on the outside of it, it has two real thin plies. You want that large thing like that in the center. You don't want that. You could use that if you don't have anything else, but it's going to make your job just that much more difficult when you come to drill holes for your uh, spokes. So you can go down to Lowe's and find just a quarter sheet of this and that's going to last you a lifetime and lots of buggies. Okay, so anyway you find that radius, you put it in here, mark the center of your piece of wood, put it in there, draw your circle, 
and uh, you'll set this on your jig like that and this edge here should come right to that cut line all right so let's just take this over to the saw and we'll show you how simple this is Okay, like I said, this has a little strip of wood here. It's going to go right in here. I bet I slide this in. Just like that. See right there is where I'm going to hit my blade. But to the start, I have to put my piece of wood on here. Judy will get over here behind me and shoot for that angle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slide this board in with the saw running and it'll cut in until I get to that hole. I might have to make a little adjustment once I'm in there. See, there's just a little bit of slot. Okay, so just watch what I do here. Ready to go? Let's go. Perfectly uh, circle, perfect circle for the outside of the ring. Now we have to cut the inside. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to the table. I'm going to see a piece of sandpaper. The reason this is so rough is because I'm using the same same blade that I used when I cut out my blanks and things. It's a 3 16th inch skip tooth blade which gives me a pretty rough cut. Which I don't really care about when I'm whittling, but uh, probably I should use a smoother blade some more teeth if I wanted to. Cut. It's okay for demonstration purposes. There we go. So we got our outer rim sanding now. Now I'm going to go back to the saw. saw again.
save that because you can use this piece to cut your next wheel. So let's just set this one aside. And if you wanted to keep going, you could just keep going and going. You got your wheel <laughs> blank right here. Okay? So we got that done. We got our two rims cut right there. That was quick and easy. So let's head back over to the workbench. Now we want to join these together. Now they're going to they're not going to match up perfectly. See, you can see that there. But don't worry about that. We're going to correct that later on. So, right now what I'm going to do is take a little glue put on that joint. Put those together like that. Pin, just clamp her together, just like that. And take your finger and wipe off a lot of that glue. All right. And just set that aside to dry. Same thing here. like that. And you've got your rims cut, okay? Now, in the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding the spokes to our wheels. And uh, for the hub here, what we're going to use to make those hubs is a little uh, set of spools. You can find these down at Hobby Lobby. These are half inch by five eighths spools, little bitty things. But they make a nice hub. Let me get one out here. And then we're going to cut them off about there and there. And that'll give me two hubs. Well, it will give me the two hubs I need for each wheel. All right? And that will go right in the center. And with that, we'll start adding our spokes, which we're going to make out of 10-inch bamboo, bamboo screws. These match the uh, match the blueprints. This is one twelfth scale. All these pattern drawings are match the blueprints just perfectly. If you can't find these, you can go visit your doctor and see if he has some uh, swabs. These are the same size as the bamboo screws and the <coughs> first one, first one we're going to use will go completely across there just like that okay and because uh, 
this is a little wagon we're not going to mess with trying to taper the taper the ends on the outside of the of the uh, spokes we're just going to use it straight a straight diameter all the way down we will have to modify it just a little bit when we get in there to fit them all together because we're going to have big, we're going to have to want to overlap each other and that will take a little bit of trimming so let me think here dealing with wheels after these dry you'll have to take some sandpaper and very gently uh, just you know, take your time and go around it and sand, sand off that uh, the rough spot. Now if you, use, if you used a smaller blade with a lot more teeth on it uh, you're not going to have a wheel that's as rough as that there. See, here's my good wheel here. I'm going to have to go along and completely sand everything down. Being careful not to put too much stress on that wheel or it'll snap in two. But once, once we get those spokes in there and everything glued together, this is a strong little wheel. It'll stand up to quite a bit of abuse. But like I say, it's never going to rotate on that wagon, except maybe when we put it on there. It's going to be anchored down to a base. Let's see if I can find it. There you go. You look real close right there. See that wire? There's one there, and there's one over there holding that buggy down, down to its base so it's not going to go anywhere. Okay? So, that's going to do it for this video, and in the next video, we'll start adding spokes to these wheels. Okay? So, until then, I'll talk to you later.